The book of Ezekiel, part 14. Um, in this particular lecture, we're going to be going into the dimensions <coughs> of the new temple. Uh, this will have to do with the dimensions of the Millennium Temple, moreover, but also, um, as we have read through this book, I have pointed out a number of times that uh, these messages from our Father, through his prophet Ezekiel, would be not only prophetic to their time, but prophetic to our time, but also prophetic to the time to come, as far as concerning the Millennium Temple. Um, from this chapter 40 to the end of the book, we're going to be covering the Millennium Temple and the New Temple at Jerusalem. In other words, the temple that would be built, the temple that Christ would see when he walked to the earth, and um, some of this is going to be a little bit... Um, less than exciting as far as the read of it because there's going to be a whole lot of measurements which you will probably not be able to picture in your head very well um, however we can't complete the book of Ezekiel without doing this I had kind of considered skipping over this part but uh, since it does pertain to the millennium it is only eight chapters, and we will go on through these eight chapters and go ahead and read them. Though, uh, as I said, this is going to be difficult for those of you uh, who are listening to picture in your head. There are depictions of this temple online that you can uh, go look at. If you uh, type in Ezekiel's Temple on most any search engine and go to images you will see uh, pretty much what the temple is going to look like that is to say Ezekiel's Millennium Temple but this will also be a template for the temple that they will rebuild after the captivity so again as always this book is speaking to their generation in other words the time this was written in and to as well as our generation which was also written to and for the time to come uh, you're going to read a lot in this book about offerings and uh, flesh and flesh offerings they will concern the temple which will be built at Jerusalem after the captivity um, during the millennium there will be no flesh to sacrifice in the first place and there will be no uh, flesh man will no longer be in the flesh himself so our offering to God for that time is our unrequited love, our obedience, our being his children, and he being our father. But uh, the two are intertwined with each other. As you have seen a number of times in scripture as we've read through this book, <coughs> our father talks to us on many levels. Excuse me for coughing. Our, talk, our father does speak to us on many levels, and he tells us things which shall come to pass as well as things which shall come to pass in the near future to the time that Ezekiel was writing this such as the king of Babylon of that time Nebuchadnezzar being a forerunner or a type or template of the Antichrist of the end times which is also the king of Babylon to say the king of confusion because confusion is what he causes he is the author of it he is the author of lies he is the author of untruth he is the author of uh, disinformation and misinformation. So we get a type and a template out of him. However, uh, Nebuchadnezzar would be a all-consuming force which God would even call his servant. Yet the two are intertwined through prophetical means as this temple here will be intertwined from its building to the Millennium Temple. So as we go into this, some of this, like I said, is going to be probably quite boring to your ears to listen to the measurements. They're not going to make a whole lot of sense to you, uh, probably not even if you're a builder or a contractor. Uh, you could no doubt sit down with a piece of paper and write all these dimensions out and 
um, with enough time and effort figure out what this thing would look like but uh, remember we're talking about the temple that's going to be built at Jerusalem um, when the Israelite children come back from captivity that is to say the tribe of Judah and Benjamin the ten tribes of the north of course will keep on migrating north into Europe but it will also be the dimensions of the Millennium Temple <coughs> excuse me again and uh, you should be able to tell the difference and see the deeper meanings from the verses and I'll try to point them out um, so we'll begin in Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse 1 and before we begin as always let us go to our Father and ask for guidance and wisdom as we read this uh, description of this temple or these temples so let us pray our glorious heavenly Father just and righteous a God in which there is no iniquity we come before you this day Father and we ask you to open our eyes and open our ears to the truth and to show us the deeper meanings that you are willing to feed us from this information written within these chapters we ask you to open the eyes and ears of all who study with us and we ask that you shine that light in our path Father so that we may see and know where to walk for we know that the path is narrow but with your light shining upon it and you removing the stumbling box we shall not trip and fall into darkness and we ask these things Father in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Yeshua Messiah Amen. So Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse 1, and again, be prepared for this to, some of it's not going to make a lot of sense to you. It's going to be hard to picture in your mind, but it is written, it is our Father's word, so thus we shall read it. Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse 1. In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in other words, they're now 25 years into captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth month and in the fourteenth year after the, the city was smitten, that is the city of Jerusalem. In other words, we are uh, fourteen years after the time of Zedekiah. Fourteen years after Zedekiah was taken into prison and Jerusalem was besieged and burned and destroyed and made desolate. And this would be after Jeremiah had left and gone to Egypt and no doubt dwelled there for a time and then headed off to Ireland to his destiny and the destiny of uh, David's seed line through uh, the daughter of Zedekiah, Skoda, and uh, her sister. So, now we've got the time frame that we're in. We're 14 years after the destruction of Jerusalem. In the selfsame day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. In other words, what has God done? He's brought him. Well, brought him where? Verse 2. In the visions of God brought me he into the land of Israel. In other words, he brought him in a vision. E Ezekiel is probably not actually there. He's there in a vision. So, uh, God is giving him a vision to tell. And these words that we're reading are going to be what he saw. And he set me upon a very high mountain which was as the frame of the city on the south. In other words, uh, probably looking down towards Jerusalem from a high mountain, framing the city from the southern point of view. Uh, in other words, below the Valley of Hinnom, uh, maybe the next highest peak. Verse 3. He brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was as the appearance of brass. Okay, why is this guy's appearance of brass? Well, anytime you see a transfigured body, a spiritual body, uh, you whether it be in the book of Daniel or in the book of Revelation or, or anywhere else, e even in the beginning of this book, they usually have the appearance of brass. And this is no doubt how human eyes, even in a vision, would uh, see a transfigured or a spiritual body with a line of flax in his hand. In other words, this is a measuring line, a lot like uh, 
a lot like one of those roll up uh, long measuring tapes that you might buy now at any uh, store uh, if, if you're a handyman or if you're a builder and a measuring reed and he stood in the gate in other words he stood in the gate of this desolated city verse 4 and the man said unto me son of man behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears in other words open your eyes and open your ears and set thine heart, which is thy mind, upon all that I shall show thee. For the intent that I might show them unto thee, art thou hither, or are thou brought hither. In other words, the whole reason I've brought you here is to see this. Declare all thou seest unto the house of Israel. In other words, this would be one way that the house of Israel, which... Um, it, it, at this particular time will include uh, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin for they will be the ones returning and rebuilding this temple but this message is for the entire house of Israel uh, though the house of Israel itself has gone over the Caucasus Mountains has headed towards Europe some of them are still scraggling in the land and uh, no doubt they will hear of this but in other words, what we're saying here is this is for all 12 tribes of Israel to know. So whether they find this out uh, when he tells them or whether they read of this years later, uh, such as we're reading now, those of us who know our heritage and know who Israel is today, we're reading those words. So this actually concerns all 12 tribes, though it will be the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, and of course the Kenites will be there. And a lot of people called Judeans who were sojourners in the land who were released from the captivity will, retur will return. And uh, this temple will be rebuilt. And it will be a greater glory than it was before just as the temple that it foreshadows in prophecy, the Millennium Temple. Verse 5. Behold, on a wall on the outside of the house round about in the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long by a cubit and a hand breadth in other words uh, a cubit in this time is uh, 18 to 20 inches it's the uh, distance from a man's elbow to his fingers according to the man so it could be anything from 18 to 20 inches depending on the man However, it's, it's roughly accurate to within two inches. Uh, nobody really knows how long this particular cubit is, but we can guess it's between 18 and 20 inches. And it's a hand breadth wide. In other words, this, this is a pole, a reed, that's, that's big enough for him to hold in his hand and measure with. So he measured the breadth of the building one reed and the height one reed. In other words, with the measuring rod, he's going to measure this. And uh, the, the building is going to be measured with the reed, and the height is going to be measured with the reed. And uh, all of the measurements given here will be by this one reed. Because uh, one reed, uh, let's see, I think it says it's six cubits long. Uh, that would be about, um, uh, let's see, 12 feet, give or take. So, yeah, uh, we'll go with 12 feet because there are 12 tribes of Israel and uh, 13 if you want to count the half tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh, but uh, we'll, we'll say 12 feet just for the sake of argument. Verse 6. Then he came unto the gate, which looketh towards the east. In other words, the gate that looks towards the rising of the sun. And went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, and the other threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad. In other words, there's two doors there, where the gate is, each door. And they're the same, uh, they're the same breadth. In other words, broad, wide. Verse 7. 
And every little chamber was one reed long and one reed broad. And between the little chambers were five cubits. And the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate within was one reed. Now again, you can sit down and try to figure all this out. It's not going to make much sense to you. It doesn't make very much sense to me in the reading of it. Because it's pretty hard to picture this stuff reading it off of a black and white writing on on a page. You know, it's 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 not like saying, okay, this is 120 feet and this is 10 feet and this is 7 feet. You know, like we would say today. Or meters if you go by the metric system. But uh, at any rate, if you sit down and take enough time, you can figure out these measurements, or at least close to them, by uh, 18 to 20 inches of the reed in, in its... Um, cubits. Verse 8. He measured also the porch and the gate within one reed. Verse 9. Then he measured the port of the gate eight cubits and the post thereof two cubits and the porch of the gate was inward. In other words facing inwards. Verse 10. And the little chambers of the east or of the gate eastward were three on this side and three on that side. There were three on one measure, and the posts had one measure, and the sides uh, on this side and on that side. So in other words, all these things are the same size, and the posts are the same size. So all these chambers, one size, which uh, there'd be three on one side and three on the other, that's six. And then you've got the post of the gate. So, they, in other words, each one of these uh, chambers is one side, one size, and each one of these posts is one size. In other words, they're all, all of the chambers are the same size, all of the posts are the same size. Verse 11. And he measured the breadth of the entry of the gate, 10 cubits, and the length of the gate, 13 cubits. Verse 12. The space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side, and the space was one cubit on that side. And the little chambers were six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. So, they're the same on both sides. Uh, again, they're, the, they're all the same size. Verse 13. He measured then the gate from the roof to uh, of one little chamber to the roof of another and the breadth was five and twenty cubits in other words twenty five cubits door against door verse fourteen he made also the posts of or he yeah he made also the posts thereof three score cubits so that's sixty cubits even unto the posts of the court round about the gate Verse 15. And from the face of the gate of the entrance until the face of the porch of the inner gate was 50 cubits. Verse 16. And there were narrow windows to the little chambers and to their posts within the gate round about and likewise to the arches. So there are arches in this thing. And the windows were round about inward. And upon each post were palm trees. Probably a design on the posts. Uh, this would not be <coughs> too dissimilar to the uh, measurements of um, the tabernacle when it comes down to it. In other words, when we get to the inner court and to the tabernacle itself, you're going to see that they're uh, pretty much the same measurements as even in the time of uh, Moses and what was done by Solomon. Verse 17. Then brought he me to the outward court, and lo, there were chambers, and a pavement made for the court round about. Thirty chambers were upon the pavement. Verse 18. 
and the pavement by the side of the gates over against the length of the gates was the lower pavement. Verse 19, And he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate unto the forefront of the inner court without. In other words, to the outside of the inner court. And hundred cubits eastward and northward. In other words, this is uh, probably going to end up being a uh, square. And of course, the Millennium Temple shall be in a square form. A cube, in other words. Verse 20. And the gate of the outward court that looked towards the north, he measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof. Verse 21. And the little chambers thereof were three on this side and three on that side. And the posts thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate. The length thereof was 50 cubits and the breadth thereof 20 and 5 cubits. So we've got a gate on the east that's one size and a gate on the north that's one size. Verse 22. And their windows and their arches and their palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looked towards the east. In other words, this gate looks like the gate that's on the east. And he went up into the unto it by seven steps. In other words, there are seven steps up to this. And seven spiritual completeness, which is what the Millennium Temple will be about. It will come on the uh, after the seventh trump. In other words, when the Lord has returned. And the arches thereof were before them. Verse 23. And the gate of the inner court was over against the gate towards the north. And uh, in other words, the gate of the inner court was facing the north. And the north is always the side of God. And towards the east. And he measured from the gate... And 100 cubits. In other words, 100 cubits north and 100 cubits east. But, as I said, God's side is the side of the north. Verse 24. After that he brought me towards the south, behold, a gate towards the south. So now we've got a gate towards the north, a gate towards the east, and a gate towards the south. And he measured the post thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures. And which measures are we talking about? Well, those of the other two gates. Verse 25. And there were windows in it, and arches thereof, round about, like those windows, the length of fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof five cubits, and twenty, five, and twenty cubits, or five and twenty cubits. Verse 26. And there were seven steps to go up to it. Again, seven spiritual completeness. And the arches thereof were before them, and it had palm trees, one on this side and one on that side, on the, upon the post thereof. In other words, probably a design. Uh, no doubt this having to do with uh, the palms that they took and laid before uh, uh, Christ as he entered into the city on what is called Palm Sunday. Verse 27. And there was a gate in the inner court towards the south. So, not only on the inner court is there a gate towards the east and towards the north and towards the south. So there's a gate on the outer wall, you could say, from the north, from the east, and from the south. And now there's a gate towards the inner court from the north and the east and the south. And he measured from gate to gate toward the south and hundred cubits. Verse 28. In other words, from the gate of the outer court to the gate of the inner court is a hundred cubits. And we'd already read that of the north gate and the east gate. So that lets you know that this thing is going to be square. Verse 28. And he brought to me to the inner court by the south gate. In other words, he, he had been on the south side and he measured the south gate according to these measures. Verse 29. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, according to these measures. And there were windows in it, 
and then the arches thereof round about it, and it was 50 cubits long, and 5 and 20 cubits broad. In other words, just as the other gates for the inner court. Uh, verse 30. And the arches round about were 5 and 20 cubits long and 5 cubits broad. Verse 21. And the arches thereof were towards the utter court. And the palm trees were upon the posts thereof. And the going up to it had 8 steps. In other words, the going up from the outer court was seven steps. The going up from the outer court was eight steps. Eight, always symbolic in the Bible of uh, new beginnings, which is what the millennium will be about. So you've got seven, spiritual completeness, and eight, new beginnings. Again, which will be what the millennium will be about. Verse 32. And he brought me into the inner court towards the east, and he measured the gate thereof to these measures. Verse 33. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, were according to these measures. And there were windows therein, and the arches thereof round about it. It was fifty cubits long, and five and twenty cubits broad. In other words, so all three of these inner court gates are the same size, and all three of the outer court gates are the same size. Uh, verse 34. And the arches thereof were towards the outward court, in other words, facing towards the outer court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof on the side, or on this side and on that side, in other words, on both sides of these posts. And the going up to it had eight steps, in other words, the same as before. Verse 35. And he brought me to the north gate and measured it according to these measures. Verse 36. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, and the windows to it round about. And the length was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. Again, all three of the outward gates are the same size, all three of the inward gates are the same size. Verse 37. And the posts thereof were towards the utter court. And palm trees were upon the post thereof, on this side, and on that side. In other words, so they could be seen going in and coming out. And the going up had eight steps. So now we know that the inner court has eight steps on three sides. Uh, three times eight, twenty-four. How many elders are there? Twenty-four. And three times seven, twenty-one. Um, Symbolic of uh, three sevens, and uh, if, if if you look at the Book of Revelation, you've got the seventh trump, which is when Christ returns, which is when the building of this Millennium Temple begins. Verse thirty-eight, and the chambers and the entries thereof were by the posts of the gates, where they washed the burnt offering. And of course, uh, during the millennium, there will be no burnt offering. The, our offering to God will be our unrequited love. So this is how we know we're also talking about um, the temple that would be built, the temple that Christ would see in his time. Um, I think I'd said a few lectures back, or maybe in another book, that the temple of Solomon would be what Christ saw, but... Actually, what I was referring to is um, this is built in the same place as Solomon's temple stood. And during this time, in other words, after Ezekiel, when the temple is rebuilt, there will be burnt offerings again to the Lord. They will take up what they had once done and burnt, burnt offerings to the Lord and... Uh, that is before the Kenites start their uh, nonsense and start selling offerings at the door of the temple, which is why Christ stormed into the temple and overchanged the money tamer, changers' tables and uh, whipped them with a cat of nine tails. Uh, let's see, verse 29. And the porch of the gate 
or, or, or in the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side. In other words, four tables to slay thereon the burnt offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering. That's how we know we're talking about the rebuilding of the temple uh, during the flesh man's time as well as the millennium temple. And uh, b b like I said, in the millennium temple there will be no flesh to burn. There will be no sin offering other than repentance to God for having fallen and worshipped the Antichrist and uh, changing of hearts through the teachings of Christ. And uh, But this is a type foreshadowing that when there will again be the offerings of lambs and he goats and rams and bullocks and doves and all the things that were required by Moses, by the Mosaic Law. And remember, this will be before Christ when this temple is built. This temple will be there during the time of Christ. And um, also after the return of Christ in the Millennium Temple. So keep your mind focused as to the uh, prophecy of this time that they're living in. And the prophecy to the time ahead of us for the Millennium Temple. Because the Millennium Temple does not get built until Christ returns. Verse 40. And at the side, without, as one goeth up into the entry of the north gate, were two tables. And th on the other side, which was at the porch of the gate, were two tables. In other words, four tables there. Verse 41. Four tables were on this side, and four tables were on that side. In other words, it's a total of eight. And again, eight is new beginnings. And by the side of the gate, eight tables, whereupon they slew the sacrifices. So, that tells you the total number. And again, eight symbolic of new beginnings. Verse 42. And the four tables were of hewn stone for the burnt offering, of a cubit and a half long, and a cubit and a half broad. In other words, they're completely square, and one cubit high, which is really all that high, 18 to 20 inches, nor wide nor square, whereupon they also laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offerings and the sacrifice. Now again, this will not be needed during the millennium. Verse 43. And within were hooks, a hand broad, fastened about, and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering. Verse 44. And without the inner court gate were the chambers of the singers of the inner court, which was on the side of the north gate. And their prospect, which is to say their view, was toward the south. One at the side of the east gate having the prospect towards the north. In other words, looking towards the north. Verse 45. And he said unto me, This chamber, whose prospect is towards the south, is for the priests and the keepers of the house. Verse 46. And the chamber, whose prospect is towards the north, in other words, on the side of the north, is for the priests and the keepers of the charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, which is to say, uh, the just, the upright, in other words, the elect, and who is the king of the just of the upright? It's Melchizedek, which was Christ before he walked in the flesh as Jesus Christ. Among the sons of Levi. And of course, the Levitical priests were to be the priest line. So, the, the Zadok, the election, are among the Levi. Or the tribe of Levi, which is to say, chosen from that tribe way back in the time of Moses, when Moses said, Who will stand for the Lord? And the Levites were the only ones of all the tribes that came to him. Which come near to the Lord to minister unto him. Okay? So, well, that's what they did in the old tabernacle. They went and sought the counsel of the Lord and did their liturgical duties. And in the end times, the elect, which is to say the, the, the Zadok, will go and minister to the Lord there. 
and no doubt seek counsel and advice from him concerning the uh, teaching that goes on during the millennium. Verse 47. So he measured the court 100 cubits long and 100 cubits broad, four square. In other words, it's, it's completely square. It's cubical. And the altar was before the house. In other words, just like the old tabernacle. The altar was before the house of the Lord. Verse 48. And he brought me into the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. And the breadth of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. In other words, these are the inner court entrances, which are three cubits wide. And uh, there are two entrances to this, apparently, rather than three. In other words, you've got your outer gate, your inner court, which both of them had three entrances, and now you're into what they uh, no doubt will call the prince's domain, in which there's an entrance on either side. Two entrances. Three cubits on this side, three cubits on that side. Verse 49. And the length of the porch was 20 cubits, and the breadth 11 cubits. And he brought me to the steps whereby he went up to it. And there were pillars by the posts on this side and on that side, and another on that side. Or, uh, pillars on this side and that side is basically the uh, what I was trying to utter there with my poor mouth that doesn't always work in uh, good coercion with my mind. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 41 and verse 1. Afterward he brought me to the temple and measured the post, six cubits broad on one side and six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. And of course the tabernacle is God's house. That's why it's called tabernacle. God's tabernacle with men. In other words, the uh, th this will end up to the Holy of Holies. Verse 2. And the breadth of the door was ten cubits. Ten always having to do with law. And, uh, and the sides of the door were five cubits. Five having to do with grace on the one side. And five cubits on the other side. And he measured the length thereof 40 cubits, and 40 probation, and the breadth 20 cubits. So, in other words, this building is a little bit longer than it is uh, wide in breadth. In other words, lengthwise it's longer than it is in breadth. And that really matches up to the uh, tabernacle made by Moses, and also to the temple built by Solomon according to the way it was built. Verse 3. And he went inward and measured the post of the door, two cubits, and the door, six cubits, and the breadth thereof, seven cubits. Verse 4. So he measured the length thereof, twenty cubits, and of the breadth, twenty cubits, before the temple. And he said unto me, This is the most holy place. In other words, this is the holy of holies. The inner sanctum, you could say. The, the, uh, the sanctuary, the place where even the Ark of the Covenant uh, should be. In other words, the throne of God, verse 5. And he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the breadth thereof, every side chamber, four cubits, and round about the house, every side. Verse 6. And the side chambers were three one over another. And the third, uh, and 30 in order. And uh, probably what we're talking about here is uh, stories. And they entered into the wall of the house for the side chambers round about that they might have hold. And hold is... Uh, a storage place and no doubt the place where they will change their holy garments again this will be set up after the original tabernacle so when you go in to speak to the Lord you will change your garments and you will wash 
and uh, we're still going to be following that law. Only the law of blood statutes and the shedding of blood to atone for sins will be done away with because Christ has already shed that blood. But they had not hold in the wall of the house. In other words, they've just got this one hold. Verse 7. And there was an enlarging and a winding about still upward to the side chambers. For the winding about of the house went up still round about. Therefore the breadth thereof the house was still upward. And so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the midst. Verse uh, 8. And I saw the height of the house round about. The foundations of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. Verse 9. And the thickness of the wall, which was on the side of the chamber, without, was five cubits. And that which was left, the place of the side chambers that were within. Verse 10. And between the chambers was a wideness of 20 cubits round about the house on every side. So you've got a... Uh, uh, a no man's zone here, you could say. Uh, it's a, a space of 20 cubits round about it. Verse 11. And the doors of the side chambers towards the place was left and one door to the north and the other door towards the south. So we got one door facing north, one door facing south, and the breadth of the place was left Five cubits round about. Verse 12. Now the building that was before the separate place, at the end, towards the west, even 70 cubits broad, in other words, this, this long tabernacle building, the wall thereof of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof was 90 cubits. Verse 13. So he measured the house an hundred cubits long and the separate place and the building and the walls thereof a hundred cubits long. And of course this matching up with the uh, old tabernacle, verse 14. And the breadth of the face of the house separate towards the east was a hundred cubits. In other words, on, on the uh, side facing the east Verse 15, and he measured the length of the building over against the separate place which was behind it, and the galleries thereof, on the one side and on the other side, and hundred cubits, with the inner temple, and the porches of the court. So again, this matching up fairly perfectly with the old tabernacle, because on both sides it's a hundred cubits long. Verse 16. And the doorposts and the narrow windows and the galleries round about it on their three stories, in other words, this is a three stories tall, over against the door, sealed with wood round about, from the ground up to the windows. And they were covered. Verse 17. To that above the door, even unto the inner house, and without, and by all the wall round about, within and without, by measure. Which means that it was measured. <laughs> I mean, you can't really make a whole lot of sense of this uh, other than uh, that which was above the door to the inner house and without, uh, by the wall, round about, within and without, w was by measure. So... Uh, in other words, probably on the inner and the outer, it was the same measure. Verse 18. And it was made with cherubims and palm trees. Now, you should recognize this from the temple of Saul. So that the palm trees, or so that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub. And every cherub had two faces. 
Now, uh, as we read earlier in Ezekiel chapter 1, they had four faces. But here they have two faces. And um, I think you'll see symbology in these two faces as to what they mean. Verse 19. So that the face of a man was toward the palm tree on the one side and the face of the young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. So you've got the symbology of the firstborn Reuben here in the man and the symbology of Judah. So probably what this represents is Israel and Judah uh, in the faces of these cherubims. And it was made through the house round about. Verse 20. Verse 20, yeah. From the ground unto the above the door were cherubims and palm trees made on the wall of the temple. Verse 21. And the posts of the temple were squared. And the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of one as the appearance of the other. In other words, the uh, face of the sanctuary looked like the other sides. In other words, it, 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 it's, it's done in proportion here. If you read the... Um, of the temple that Solomon built, you're going to see a lot of this uh, same lingo. The one side looked like the other side. So, don't be too dismayed by it. Uh, I don't even fully comprehend this reading it. Uh, in looking at drawings and um, pictures of the Millennium Temple, uh, of different people's views, they're all pretty much the same. So, uh, you know, don't let it throw you if you're not understanding a whole lot of this. You're certainly not alone in that. Uh, reading this off of a, a page is not really like having a legend to go by, you know. Verse 22. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length two cubits. And the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. And of course, this would probably be the, by the old temple, the table where they had the showbread and the, um, the lamp. Verse 23. And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors. In other words, the temple and the inner sanctuary have two doors. Uh, probably two doors each. Verse 24. In other words, two entrances. And the doors had two leaves apiece. Two turning leaves and two leaves for the one door and two leaves for the other door. In other words, this is almost exactly like Solomon's temple too. So no doubt this is built after the design of Solomon's temple. Verse 25. And they were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubims and palm trees, like were as made upon the walls. And there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. And of course, this would have to do with uh, the old tabernacle of Moses, which had the thick planks with the rivets or the uh, uh, chapiters in them, whatever they were called. The uh, We would call them today probably bolts and nuts, but uh, fasteners. Let's just say fasteners and leave it at that. Verse 26. And there were narrow windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side. And on the sides of the porch and upon the side chambers of the house and thick planks. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 42. Then he brought me forth into the utter court, the way towards the north. And he brought me into the chamber that was over against the separate place, which was before the building towards the north. Verse 2, because the length of an hundred cubits was the north door, and the breadth thereof was fifty cubits. Verse 3, over against the twenty cubits, which were for the inner court, and over against the pavement, which was for the utter court, was the gallery against the gallery in three stories. In other words, three stories tall. Verse 4, 
and before the chambers was a walk of ten cubits breadth inward and the way of one cubit. In other words, so this is a, a thin little pathway, the length of one cubit, and uh, as, as Christ would say, narrow is the way, and few there be that go thereat, so maybe a little connotation of that to this. And their doors were towards the north, verse 5. Now the upper chambers were shorter, for the galleries were higher than these than the lower, and then the middlemost of the building. So you've got your three stories there. Verse 6. And there were three stories, but had not pillars as the pillars of the courts. In other words, back in the old tabernacle there were poles. Now there are actual pillars. Therefore, the building was straightened more than the lowest, and the middlemost from the ground. In other words, since there are no pillars, it's a straight up and down cube. Kind of kind of like if you pictured an apartment building today that was square. Verse 7. <coughs> and the wall that was without over against the chambers, towards the utter court, and on the forepart of the chambers, the length thereof was 50 cubits. Verse 8. And the length of the chambers in the utter court was 50 cubits, and lo, before the temple was 100 cubits. So you can put this together in your mind. Verse 9. And from under these chambers was the entry of the east side, as one goeth into them from the utter court. Verse 10. And the chambers were in the thickness of the wall of the court towards the east, over against the separate place, over against the building. Verse 12, or verse 11. And the way before them was like the appearance of the chambers which were towards the north, as long as they, in other words, the same length, and as broad as they. And all of their goings out were both according to their fashions, according to their doors. In other words, one side looks like the other side. Okay? Put, put it plain and simple. Verse 12. And according to the doors of the chambers that were towards the south was a door at the head of the way, even the way directly before the wall towards the east, as one entereth into them. Verse 13. Then said he unto me, the north chambers and the south chambers, which are before the separate place, be the holy chambers, where the priests that approach unto the Lord shall eat the most holy things, where they shall lay the most holy things, and the meat offering, and the sin offering, and the trespass offering, for the place is holy. Now again, remember, there will be no flesh in the Millennium Temple. This is also a template of the temple that's being built, but what are the holy things that they eat of? Well, the Word of God. And the holy things that they eat of in the literalist sense, in the historical, would be the priest's portion. In other words, the shoulder, the wave offering, all the things that we covered way back in the time of Moses. The uh, cakes of barley mixed with oil, fine measures of flour, and so on and so forth. Verse 14. When the priests enter therein, they shall not go out of the holy place unto the utter court, but there they shall lay their holy garments wherein they minister, for they are holy. In other words, they're going to have to change clothes to go out into the outer court. And they shall put on the other garments and shall approach those things which are for the, temp for the people. In other words, to go in and speak to God, to Christ, in other words, the prince's domain, they're going to have to put on holy garments to go before him. Verse 15. Now when he had made an end of measuring the inner house, he brought me forth towards the gate, whose prospect is towards the east, and measured it round about. In other words, whose direction was towards the east. And he measured the east side in the, with the measuring reed, 500 reeds with the measuring reed round about. Verse 17. 
and he measured the north side 500 reeds with the measuring reed north about. And he measured the south side 500 reeds with the measuring reeds north the, uh, with the measuring reed. Verse 19. And he turned about to the west side and he measured 500 reeds with the measuring reed. Okay, so that's all four sides and they're all 500 reeds long. So this is a cube. This is a complete square. And again, the Millennium Temple is a uh, cubical temple. Verse 20. And he measured it by the four sides... And it had a wall round about it, 500 reeds long, 500 reeds broad, to make a separation between the sanctuary and the profane place. And the profane place, uh, no doubt, were the sinners who have not yet overcome uh, dwell. But anyway, um, as we study this, remember, we're talking about... Uh, the temple that would be built, uh, the one that Christ would see with his eyes as he um, walked in the flesh, and we're also speaking of the Millennium Temple. In other words, the one is a type of the other. However, the one made with man's hands upon the earth will not be perfect like the Millennium Temple will be. And uh, even if you look at pictures of it, it's, it's not exactly perfect. However, the Millennium Temple shall be. But you've got to keep in mind that we're talking two separate uh, times here. We're talking prophecy of the end times. In other words, the Millennium, the return of Christ. And we're talking about the prophetical building of the Temple at Jerusalem when the children of Israel come out of captivity. That is just to, to say the tribes that will return. The house of Israel itself the ten tribes, Samaria, will continue north and will build a separate kingdom. So the two sticks are not yet joined that we read of in the past couple of lectures. At any rate, I think this is a uh, fairly good place to stop for this lecture before we get into the next one. So uh, we'll pick this up in Ezekiel chapter 43. And... Uh, Maybe we'll even be able to finish the book in the next lecture. If not, certainly in two more. And again, I know a lot of this is hard to understand. It's even hard for me to grasp reading it off the page. It's it's a lot better when you've got a picture to look at and you can sit there and and kind of kind of glean it in your mind's eye as to what it looks like. But reading it off the page like this, not really going to make all that much sense. So, you know, if you didn't get a lot out of this particular study, don't worry about it because. Uh, it, it is so, some of the things are kind of hard to understand, and you know, the, it's just like when we read the building of the tabernacle. First, God told Moses, and then Moses told Israel, and then Israel built the temple, and then Israel brought the temple before Moses, and then it was inspected by Moses, and you had a whole bunch of readings of the same things over and over and over and over again, and it was very kind of tedious in reading it when it when it's you know it, it would be easier if it's if it just said uh, and the measurements that they measured it by were to the measurements that Mo God gave to Moses upon Mount Sinai you know but our father did it this way for a reason I, I suppose to test us to see whether we would stick in his word and and uh, that's one reason we're going to go ahead and continue with this and uh, take it to its full but, as always, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, it is my prayer for you that you will study your Father's Word in depth, and that you will go into the Hebrew and Greek whenever and at all possible, and uh, study to show yourself approved, and always, always pray to our Father, and ask for Him for guidance and wisdom as you study His Word. And even when you get to things like this, this chap these two chapters that we've read, and you don't understand things, just lay it to the side, slide it over to the back burner. It, 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 it will reach you eventually if it's meant to. And if it's not meant to, then hey, you know, don't worry about it. God will give you your portion to eat. And may our Father bless 
Those of you who love to study his word and seek his counsel and wisdom in his face from his word. And never forget to pray for our brothers and sisters that are still out there stuck in the darkness of deception. Living by the earthly means consumed in their own ways. Because they are his children too and he loves them. So sound your trumpet, blow your horn, warn them, plant your seeds, and let God do the rest. You build it and he'll, he'll provide the bricks. So God bless you in all your studies. And uh, may he fill your cups to overflowing with knowledge and wisdom. Thank you for listening. This has been Just Thoughts.